And starting off our list with number 10 is Comic Zone. This really was a step in the right direction for the beat-em-up genre. Here we have the usual classic fighting and action the genre is known for, but with the addition of puzzle solving, item management, and branching paths to flesh out the experience a lot more. The whole game uses a unique style where the levels actually take place over the frames of a comic book which looks great and works really really well. Next on our list at number 9 is Ghouls and Ghosts. Sega did a wonderful job converting Capcom's classic to the Genesis, and as such, the game became one of the system's early release classics. In my opinion, this is probably the most fun and accessible of the games in the series. The multi-directional firing really helps balance out the trademark regimented jumping style the games are known for. And at number 8 we have Beyond Oasis. This little hidden gem is for the Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive under another name. This has to be one of my favorite RPGs on the system. The graphics are very nice and it's a lot of fun mainly due to its excellent fighting system and it just has an amazing and unique style. A lot of people might say that this is a Zelda for the Sega systems but really it kind of has its own thing going for it and that's what I really like about it. It really has enough to set it apart from Zelda and just makes it a great classic title for the Genesis. Next on our list at number 7 we have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist. While not quite up to the standards of the SNES Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time Part 4, Hyperstone Heist is nonetheless still an awesome turtle game to be proud of. It's basically a remix of all sorts of the previous turtle beat em ups played with up to date Turtles in Time gameplay and controls. It's a great game to have for the Genesis and I highly highly recommend you guys pick this one up. Nearing the halfway point with number 6 we have Streets of Rage Part 2. This was, in my opinion, an ultra refined beat em up. It never stayed far from the classic formula but was polished to perfection and contained the best fighting action of the period with loads of simultaneous on screen enemies and interesting boss fights. It was just an amazingly well presented and feeling game with the timeless quality about it. At number 5 is Contra Hardcore, the greatest Contra game of all time. Hardcore distills everything great about the series and takes everything as far as it can go. Tons of amazing set pieces, one after another, many of the best sections of previous games revisited and improved upon. Awesome music, branching pathways, increasing longevity, a proper narrative, expanded and improved weapon system, multiple characters which all play differently, the list of excellent aspects goes on and on. A warning to the weak though, this game does require a little perseverance and starting out can be a bit daunting, but if it's too much for you then you probably shouldn't be playing Contra games in the first place to be honest. And at number 4 is a game close to my heart and it's Mortal Kombat 2. This was probably my favorite game in the series. Mortal Kombat had managed to find his feet by this time and build upon the original and in my opinion is the fairest and most balanced game of the series. This was actually my first mature game that I ever played. I remember playing this in Chicago at my cousin's house and it was the first time I saw blood in a video game. Unlike the Super Nintendo counterpart, there was no blood in the Super Nintendo version but in the Mortal Kombat Genesis version you got all the blood and guts gory. And at number 3 we have Sonic the Hedgehog Part 2. Lacking all the originality and fresh ideas that made the first game stand out so much, Sonic 2 was basically a run of the mill rehash, a sequel which replayed the same levels again but with a change of background designs and some extra speed. It also started the series unhealthy obsession with adding extra characters which would bog down later games so much. While it seems like I'm ragging a lot on Sonic 2, it's actually my favorite in the series but it does have its drawbacks and that's why it's number 3 on my list. But it is my favorite, I just wish they would have done a little bit more with Sonic 2 instead of just rehashing the original game. And the runner up coming in at number 2 is Earthworm Jim. 
Earthworm Jim was an amazing game that redefined the run and gun gameplay. It had comedy, it had tons of charm, and generally an all around brilliant presentation. It was a Genesis original that was so successful that it got ported to almost every other machine out there, and it even got its own cartoon series. Needless to say, Earthworm Jim is an amazing game and I can't recommend it enough, so you guys definitely should check it out. And coming in at number 1 is Gunstar Heroes! The first time I saw Gunstar Heroes was actually on an episode of GameSack, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I had never before in my life imagined that a Genesis game could pull off this level of action going on with such an impressive graphics and simultaneous two-player. It's definitely a must-have Genesis classic, and probably the biggest reason why this treasure is held in such high regard. I highly, 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 highly recommend you guys pick this up. It can cost a pretty penny, but it's well worth it because this is, in my opinion, the best game for the Genesis. Fuck, and we haven't even seen uh, oh we got all three yes, nice. <laughs> 